when I was uh, traveling in an auto from one place to another, my interest is to know or talk with the auto driver. Just a chat, it will make him feel good that you are not a ghost sitting at the back. <laughs> so learn to do that. Chat with somebody, talk with somebody, ask his goodness, ask his welfare, ask his name, that itself will add value. Once I started talking, he was introducing himself, his family, his children, etc. And I asked him, how much does he earn per day? Auto driver. Very big city. He said, I earn about uh, 300 rupees per day. I said, very good amount. But he said, if I work from morning 5 to night 10, 300 per day. And then uh, when I said, the good amount, he said, no. And he started giving me statistics. Whether he earns 300 rupees or not, he has to pay 110 rupees rent to the owner every day. He is renting the auto, the owner he has to pay 110 rupees. So what is the balance? 190 only. I said, fair amount. Said no. Petrol charge, puncture charge, auto repair charge, from that 190 only. So what is it that remains with him? He says, by the time I go 10 o'clock, 50, 60 rupees will remain with me. Because there are hundreds and hundreds of autos, he's not the only one. It's a competitive word for them. So somewhere they have to survive, they cannot say no if they have to go to any far off place, they have to take passengers and their bargain and this, that, so many other problems. So we were going moving. Then I asked your usual question, you pay something to the police? Luncheon? The moment I uttered this word, he slowed down the auto to the side of the road going slowly, turned towards me and I can see the inspiration, the confidence in his face, that conviction in his face, he told me, 10 years I have been riding this auto, I have been driving this auto, not even one day I have paid one rupee lunch up to any policeman. I did not leave him. I probed a little. I said, you have not paid, okay, but they will take. <laughs> they will take. They are the masters on the road. Now the same man, I cannot forget his face. He said, they will not take from me. I said, why they will not take? Because I have not done any mistake. And I am not going to do any mistake. What kind of mistakes? I don't go in the no entry board way. I don't take extra passengers. I always wear the uniform, keep my license. And I don't cross the stop line while it's a green signal or bypass. So these are the things which an auto driver does normally. So when I don't do that, they cannot stretch their hand or put their hand in my pocket. Nor will I pay something. And he told me a very secret, very interesting thing. They will take or abuse or uh, put the auto driver in trouble if that fellow is a repeated offender. He's a repeated offender. He's again and again going in the no entry board, no entry way. He's again and again doing a mischief. He's carrying contraband goods in the vehicle. He's not wearing his uniform. These are repeated offenders and the police have a track record of them. They know their man auto number. Moment that fellow is seen that side, immediately they will send a message by their mobile or by the wireless, this fellow is coming 50 rupees below. <laughs> Even if he doesn't make, make a mistake that day. Because he's had done earlier, we have to keep on taking from him. That's how the problem, they get to escape, they pay this lunch up and pray bribe. Or this fellow's snatch. Or trouble them, harass them. Now imagine, one auto driver, Earning only 50, 60 rupees, but still an inspired personality in his own heart to face the value system or to face the society. 
What is it that has gone into them that we people lack? Or the majority lack? Why is it that they are only a young minority, minimum percentage, that we can count on our fingers? Actually, the, the law, the triangle, the top alone will be the good people, and mass, masses will be bad, should be reversed. The top level which is should be reversed, imagine a triangle reversed. Why shouldn't the situation be like that? Why shouldn't Hyderabad be like that? Why should your college be not like that? Do we ask this question? Do we think about it? Not just today, yesterday, today and tomorrow. From 2nd of July, when you go into the college, or if you don't go next week to the college for some reason, do you not think about it from next week onwards? Why are we a sheep in the crowd? Where is the tenacity gone? Where is the vitality gone? Hindi mein bata hai na manush, jo man mein khush hai, wo manush hai. Otherwise, what is it? Having been born as a man, leave a mark behind you. Swamiji's favorite remark to youngsters. Having been born as a man, leave a mark behind you. Not on sands, but on rocks of destiny. That is the continuity of the inspiration. If the satellite of Dr. Murthy of Isro has to be launched in the orbit, it has to have the booster till that desti destination. Otherwise, it's a disaster, is it not? It has to be fueled, it has to be maintaining the track record, the speed. It has to be audacious, it has to travel against gravitation, it has to break that sound barrier. So, when we are able to send a machine, a rocket, a satellite to the far off space, around the moon or around the sun, around the earth. What is it that makes me go backward, backward or distant among themselves in our life, in our everyday life? <coughs> Lack of inspiration. There's no fire in your belly. It just cools off very quickly. That was the passion with which Swamiji worked. To ignite that fire continuously. So if that one example of the auto driver. Let us look for that inspired personalities around our area, in your area. You may be in Tarnaka, you may be in Mabunagar, somebody in Nizamabad, somebody in Dilshuknagar, somebody in Ashoknagar. So what? Find out that inspired person and you get that fire, get that warmth of that in fire. That is our work. That should be your outlook. Swamiji mentions this, hide your faces in shame. What are you doing? Is there not enough water in the Bay of Bengal to drown you, your university degrees, gowns, books and make a new living? He says, throw it. Come and see the nation on the march. It's the first letter he writes while going to America. So that inspiration, why are we not able to sustain? What makes us remove the fire when it is heating up or when it is helping the potato to boil? Please think. So the second uh, inspiration which comes here, another auto driver, I'll tell you, in Bombay recent news is that he, he was standing in the VT station and was going, uh, was waiting for a passenger on Marwadi gentleman with a big bag, kept the bag inside and asked, uh, take me to Bandra. He said, okay, and was waiting, started the auto. By the time that Marwadi merchant uh, had a phone call, mobile, he was standing outside the auto and talking. Some, intu some intuition said this fellow is sitting inside and talking. Auto driver drove off. Then Bandra Agya, Udariye, get down. Yeah, he's seeing only back. The gentleman is standing near the station only. And the moment auto went, he got excited and my property gone, my bag gone, this, that. Auto driver cheat and made a big complaint and it went around the whole Bombay. Uh, went up to the police commissioner and he said, all right, let me see who it is, whether any name is there or not, etc. And he opened that bag and saw diamonds and rubies and so many, many precious jewels inside the bag. That fellow was a jeweler, Marwari. Look at that spark in his belly. Anything could have done? He would have just walked off, gone away to Dubai, Gone away to some Delhi, one diamond ring, this one is enough, earning crores of rupees, but so many value, three lakh, it's like three lakh diamonds were there. 
small, small cut. And by the time commissioner got the message, a wireless message, and he is also sending and uh, this one, this fellow drives the auto into the police station with the bag, does namaskaram, salute to the commissioner, keeps it on the bag and is about to go back silently. Commissioner opens and sees this is the bag and that fellow is called there and says, somebody asked him it seems, why didn't you not, just a probe, you know, news, newspapers, why didn't you take it away? He says, the moment I saw, my mind said, it, is, it does not belong to me. It is not in my blood, not in my subconscious mind. No, it is somebody's property. Let me give it. And as a reward, he was given 10,000 rupees. But here, 3 lakh diamonds, he could have become a Maharaja of the whole world. See, look at that uh, uh, fire inside. Look at the compassion. Look at the healing, the sensitive. Inspiration is sensitive. Inspiration is sensitive. It is not gross. The more finer the mind becomes by sadhana, by yoga, by meditation, by cleansing, by formatting, the more powerful it will become. That requires, if you have to maintain that intensity, if you have to maintain that consistency, if you have to maintain that deep love for the nation and for your character, you have to take a hard decision, my dear young friends. You have to take a painful decision. Rome was not built in a day. When Beethoven was asked, Beethoven, the great German symphony musician, who wrote so many symphonies, Beethoven symphonies, unfortunately he could not listen. Beethoven was deaf. But he could appreciate, feel the presence that his music is appreciated because looking at the reaction of the audience. And one young mother said, he wants to be like you. He is your role model. A German mother told Beethoven. Beethoven just wrote back, it can be done. The boy was jumping. But the mother read out the next part of the line is, if he can sustain his practice and inspiration for 32 years into 20 hours of practice. Then he can create symphonies like this. It's a hard decision, but it is a world-class decision. Yesterday, Swamiji was Adhyaksh Maharaj was telling it out, Trailokya metada kilam tavapada mule. It is not a simple thing, but a truthful thing. Please understand this important point if you have to maintain that inspiration in any part of the state that you have come from. My friend has come from Pune, somebody has come from Chennai, somebody has come from Kanali, somebody has come from other places. Take up this decision. The decisions make a lot of difference in our life. We don't do that. What does this say? The eagle, having the longest span of life amongst its species, what does it has to do? It can live up to 70 years, but to reach this age, the eagle must make a hard decision. What is that hard decision? In its 40s, the beaks, the nails, the feathers all become very heavy. They become old. They cannot catch the prey. They cannot kill any animal. It cannot fly. Then what does this fellow do? It's long and sharp beak becomes bent. Okay? It uh, old age and heavy wings due to thin, thick feathers become stuck and make it difficult to fly. Then the eagle is left with two options: either to die or to go through a painful process of 150 days. It's a big tapasya for the meditation for the eagle. It has to gain a new life. The process requires the eagle has to go up to the top of a mountain and sit on its nest and then it knocks its beak against a rock until it plucks it out. Then the eagle will wait for a new beak to grow back and then it will pluck out its talons. Talons means gore. Then when its new talons grow back, the eagle starts plucking its old age feathers. Again painful. Now, five months, eagle takes its famous flight of rebirth and lives for 30 more years. Inspired. <laughs> that is a lesson to us from this eagle, Garuda, 
the vahana to take and any difficulties. Many times in order to survive, we have to start a change process. The change has commenced. The battle has begun. How many of you or how many of us can take a painful but a powerful decision like Abhimanyu entering into the Chakra of Yuga? Abhimanyu enters into the Chakra of Yuga knowing well that he is facing death. There is no looking back. And at that critical moment, please think about that situation. Young lad, father is not there. Grandfather Krishna is not there. Chakravyuha, the master mathematician, the guru in Drona comes out to catch a Yudhishthira under a particular strategy. Yudhishthira is there. Nakula, Sahadeva, Bhima, Drishtatimna and all the other Maharathis are there. Nobody knows this art except Krishna and Arjuna. Drona knew it. Duryodhana knew it. Karna knew it. So that is the only way we can win. But here is a situation, Dharma Sankatam. Nobody can do it. But suddenly comes an inspired soul, a young boy, 16 years or so. Uncle, give me a chance. What you can do, my son? And if I allow you, Arjuna will be very angry against me. How can I permit you? How can I permit you? But then, how did you know all this? Then he reveals the story. He says, it is because of the knowledge that I got when I was in the womb of my mother, Subhadra. Half knowledge. Half big knowledge. I can enter inside, I cannot come out. But now the time has come to prove that I am the son of Krishna, grandson of Krishna and the son of Arjuna. Please permit me. How can we help you? Just be behind me. We will do the rest. And the rest is history. Veera Sargam. He enters and enters and enters, penetrates into the core of the chakra, into the center where all the seven Maharathis are waiting to attack him like alligators, like sharks. Each one is powerful. This young boy defeats them each one by one, one by one. One by one. Nobody is able to face his missiles. But then, Dharma's rule is broken. Unfortunately, Duryodhana's wrong leadership prevails and he orders attacking simultaneously. So, it was a painful, powerful decision. Veeraswarkar. One full day was, is dedicated in the Mahabharata to Abhimanyu. And he becomes immortal in the entire generation of India. Why? He took a great decision. For the sake of what? For dharma. Otherwise it would have been a disaster. Anything could have happened. I have to become Abhimanyu. I have to face the chakra of has thrown across in your colleges and daily life. But do I have the knowledge? Do you have the competence? Do you have that inspiration in my stomach? In my heart? That is your test. That is your test. So many people, so many of you keep telling me, or your friends have been telling me how there is a misnomer, there is an what you call uh, hesitation, inhibition, and uh, all sorts of things by your friends. That is Chakra Vyuha. Chakra Vyuha. You are getting training to enter into the Chakra Vyuha. Three days and three nights. Not with missiles, but with your thought process. Thought conquers thought. Thought conquers thought. Vyatireka bhavas, vyatireka bhavas. Contradictory, counterproductive thoughts are being thrown. Vyatireka bhavane pratipaksha bhavana. Thought conquers thought. So please understand this situation. Let us work towards it. But time is less, the work is more. That was Swamiji. That was Swamiji. So, 150th birthday anniversary, be inspired. Be inspired to, to take his teachings very powerfully, very seriously. So, the letters of Vivekananda will give you inspiration. Nothing less than that.
will be inspired for eternity, my dear young friends. It's not just for one week or ten days or fifteen days. For eternity, I'm telling you, you'll be inspired for eternity. Please have be the responsible for your own destiny. How to become responsible for this destiny? Let's look at this small uh, clipping. Number one is, this character counts a lot. For to become inspired, you should have a shield. You should have a shield like Abhimanyu. What is Swamiji's uh, this one? Invitation to all of you, have the ideal of Nachiketa, of the Upanishads. Have the ideal of Mahavira Hanuman. Today is uh, Ekadashi, Hanuman is available today. I mean, Hanuman will be sitting where Ramana will be going now. But that Hanuman, what is his inspiration? What is his quality, leadership quality? Jitendriyam. One who has conquered the Indriyas. Indriyas are five, five horses. Eyes to see, ears to hear, a tongue to taste and talk, the nose to smell, the hand, the skin to touch. Five Indriyas, knowledge Indriyas, Gnana Indriyas, if they are wild Indriyas, what is your life? You bring wild horses from the forest and put them in the race course and ask them to run. Where will they run? Back to the forest. They will not run in the course. It's not a course for them. It's a wild run. But then they bring those fellows and it seems one month they take them round and round the area. They keep on habituating it. So that it will know where it has to run. Tame the horse, tame the wildness. Then it becomes your friend. It runs according to this area, according to the direction, because it has become a habit. So when you go out into the world, what is your life jacket? What is your lifeline? Can you reduce the, uh, what you call, pimps and fancies which are thrown upon you through the media and through your this one? Reduce. You may not eradicate everything. It's not, it's not, a, not a possible. You have to be with your this one. But can you reduce that intensity of the attractions and the distractions with the shield of this uh, inspiration? So, that inspiration comes from your basic character. A small documentary film was made by some young students in Vishakhapatnam last year. We did a big youth convention there. 3,000, 4,000 students in the Vishport uh, Stadium. There Dr. Ranadurai, Dr. Murthy and all participated. And it was a very motivating session for these uh, young graduates of that port city. So they had to made a small film, very interesting, very good attempt was made of showing where is the problem and where is the solution. It's a common problem that it, uh, they have enacted, acted there. Their own uh, college mates, etc. But very truthful, you will enjoy. But there is a beautiful message at the end. Please see that. India, enthronement the talented doctors, skillful engineers, Scientists in the country. Prasutam ati vayanga vridhi chintu na desa lo manadesam kuda vart. Kani manam prati rozu paper lo ekado dekira bridge pull poin dalo. Koi jam anda ke yavaro chan koi rano chalu thunta. Em manko bridge pull po kunda katta galagi technology le da. Unde kona technology no upyog inch kona talented persons manadegi le ra. Kona kani kya bolam wala ki chetta sudhi le kapora. इंडिया रानू ना कालू ना सुपर पावर दा आये दुक्तन दा आज प्रस्तुत हो ना समस्या में आधार पड़े उन्तन दी आइटम ना दोस्तों में ना प्रधान समस्या एंटी ये प्रश्न के जवाब नहीं चेपे बदलो पब्लिक ने आड़े तो अभी नहीं थी ब्लैक मनी दानी बड़ी दिस थे इंडिया चार डाल बहुत उन्तन दी पैदा देखो रिसर्वेशन दे 
మనుషుల్లో వ్యక్తిత్వం లేకపోవడం ఎస్ ల్యాక్ ఆఫ్ క్యారెక్టర్ ఇప్పుడు ఒక్కసారి మన ఫిల్మ్ ఇండస్ట్రీ పరిస్థితి చూద్దాం మీరు కనుక ఓకే చేస్తే సొసైటీకి ఒక మంచి మెసేజ్ ఇవ్వచ్చు సార్ ఇది స్క్రిప్ట్ అసలు నా ఎంట్రెన్స్ ఎలా ఉండాలి మినిమం పది మంది ఇలా గాల్లో లేస్తే గన్స్ పట్టుకుని షూట్ చేసేయాలి లేకపోతే ఫ్యాన్స్ హట్ అవుతారు మినిమం ఇద్దరు ఇరు ఇద్దరు ఒక ఐటమ్ సౌండ్ లేకపోతే మాస్ ఆడియన్స్ కి ఎక్కదయ్యా పోయి అలా స్క్రిప్ట్ అని ఉంటే తీసుకుంటా ఇప్పుడు మనం ఒక గవర్నమెంట్ హాస్పిటల్ కి వెళ్తున్నాం హలో <laughs> 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 ఇప్పుడు మనం ఒక పొలిటికల్ లీడర్ దగ్గరికి వెళ్తున్నాం సీఎం గారు నేనండి మీ మెనల్ మీద ఉన్న కేసు నా పొజిషన్ పార్టీ మీదకి తోసాను సార్ మరి నా మినిస్టర్ పోస్ట్ కాస్త చూడండి సార్ ఇప్పుడు మనం ఒక కాలేజ్ స్టూడెంట్ దగ్గరికి వెళ్తున్నాం ఇప్పుడు మనం ఒక జర్నలిస్ దగ్గరికి వెళ్దాం హలో మినిస్టర్ గారు బాయ్ చేస్తున్న సార్ వంద కోట్లు కూడా మంచి క్యారెక్టర్ కనిపిస్తున్నాయి ఈ వీడియో ఇంకెవరు చూడకుండా ఉండాలంటే వన్ సి నా అకౌంట్ ట్రాన్స్ఫర్ చేయండి ఇమీడియట్ గా ఇసుక పునాదిలో ఎంత పెద్ద కట్టడమైన ఎలా కూలిపోతుందో అదేవిధంగా వ్యక్తిత్వం లేని మనుషుల వల్ల దేశాభివృద్ధి కూడా పతనమవుతుంది ఒక దేశం ఆర్థికంగా సామాజికంగా రాజకీయంగా అభివృద్ధి చెందాలంటే పార్లమెంట్ లో చేసే చట్టాల వల్ల కాదు కేవలం మనుషులలో మార్పు వచ్చినప్పుడే దేశాభివృద్ధి సాధ్యమవుతుంది విద్య ధనము పేరు ప్రతిష్టలు ఇవేవీ కావు కేవలం వ్యక్తిత్వం మాత్రమే దుర్భేద్యమైన కష్టాల అద్దుబోరలు సైతం ఛేదించగలదు అన్న స్వామి వివేకానంద మాటలను ఆదర్శంగా తీసుకుని మేము మీకు ఈ చిత్రం అందించబోతున్నాం ఒక ఇంజనీర్ ఒక డాక్టర్ ఒక ఫిల్మ్ డైరెక్టర్ ఒక పొలిటికల్ లీడర్ ఇలా అందరూ స్టూడెంట్ లైఫ్ నుండి వాళ్ళ వాళ్ళ ప్రొఫెషన్స్లోకి వచ్చిన వాళ్ళే ఒకవేళ ఆ స్టూడెంట్కి 
మనం వాల్యూస్ తో కూడిన ఎడ్యుకేషన్ అందిస్తే అప్పుడు తను మెడిసిన్ చదివితే సమాజానికి ఉపయోగపడే డాక్టర్ ఉంటాడు తను ఫిల్మ్ డైరెక్టర్ అయితే సమాజానికి ఉపయోగపడే సినిమాలు తీస్తాడు ఇలా తను ఏ మార్గంలోకి వెళ్ళినా దేశానికి ఉపయోగపడతాడు అలా విలువలతో కూడిన విద్యను అందించి వ్యవస్థలో మార్పు రావడానికి కారణమైన ఒక నలుగురి విద్యార్థుల కథ They were inspired by Swamiji's message and they brought it out very figuratively, very nicely. A very good attempt. Just ordinary engineering college students. Third year, second year, fourth year. All within 15 days. They worked very hard over this and they themselves are the actors, they themselves are the directors and did not uh, ask any professional help. Just inspired. They just wanted to say something, do something for the masses. 4,000 students will be presented there. So that is how the great work can come through small measures. That is where Vivekananda writes a beautiful letter from America to Alasinga Perumal in Chennai, Madras. He says, My dear Alasinga, I am going regularly to work. The sheer power of the will will do everything. You must organize a society which should regularly meet and write to me about it as often as you can. In fact, get up as much enthusiasm as you can. Inspiration is equal to enthusiasm. Only beware of falsehood. Go to work, my boys. A fire will come to you. The faculty of organization is entirely absent in our nature. But this has to be infused. The great secret is absence of jealousy. Be always ready to concede to the opinions of your brethren. That is the whole secret. Fight on bravely. Life is short. Give it up to a great cause. Work, work, conquer all by your love. Try to expand. Remember, the only sign of life is motion and growth. Keep on steadily. So far we have done wonderful things. Onward, brave souls, we will gain. Organize and found societies and go to work. That is the only way. Work hard. Be holy and pure and the fire will come. Yours affectionately, Vivekananda. His personal letters to Alasinga Perumal. Adasinga Perubal is an inspired soul. His biography has been published. You should read how he served, how he went from door to door in Madras. Because Vivekananda did not have one penny, one naya paisa. But he, the call was there for him to travel to the west. But he said, I will not ask anybody. Let the Lord decide. Adasinga took upon his own responsibility, took upon his shoulder as Vivekananda's disciple. And he, so inspired, went from door to door in the areas of Mailapur. He himself, most orthodox Brahmin. He himself having 13 people in his house to feed, as a school teacher. Went to Raipeta, went to Mailapur, Triple Kain, most orthodox places in Chennai. Went for to beg a little money for his guru. And he collected about 600 rupees at that time. By doing this for one month, he did not inform his guru that he is going to do this. But then look at the test of that inspiration. Swamiji scolded him. Who asked you to go and do this? I am not ready to go to the west. Alasinga was taken aback, but he maintained his school. Guru's blessings or words are more important. And what did this guru, great guru, do? He said, Take this money and distribute it among the fishermen in Mailapur Beach, Marina Beach. All the effort that he went out of his love and affection, Guru said, no. I have not got my master's consent, my mother's consent. How can I go to purchase a ticket for my train, by uh, yeah, seafare? Go. Adasinga took it. It is another sign of his devotion and his faith on Vivekananda. 
immediately distributed it among the fishermen community. Swamiji blessed him. Swamiji blessed him. And when this inspired soul, believe me, met the American disciples of Vivekananda with his telecom and tuft of hair and his uh, dhoti in a different attire and bare-bodied traditional man, a very orthodox man, they laughed at him. They just smiled and giggled among themselves at his attire. These MacLeods and Christine and some other American friends who had come inspired by Swamiji. Do you know what? Vivekananda did not talk to them for one week. He did not talk. They were shocked. He's not turning their face towards them. But he was the one who loved them and brought them to India for a big work here. He's not talking. He's not smiling. He's not that usual self. But he's avoiding them and going away. Then uh, MacLeod, intelligent lady and a very powerful lady, knew something is wrong which they had done. That is why Swamiji was never like this in America. Something we have done wrong. Otherwise he would not have reacted like that. And she made inquiries. Why, what, how, what? Then somebody pointed out, it is because of your reaction when you saw the Sita. Swamiji is not appreciating that. And they profusely apologized. And Swamiji says, one word more against that man, you will never be able to see me. They realized because of this Adasinga, Swamiji was able to travel to America. That love that he gave and the love that he received was unparalleled in Indian history. Ramakrishna Vivekananda, Guru Shishya, here Adasinga and Vivekananda. And like that many, many, many other disciples inspired by this fiery words. And Adasinga, believe me, my dear young friends, if you read those letters exclusively printed in this book called Letters of Vivekananda, exclusive about 40, 50 letters, from America to Alasinga Pirumal. You will think whether Vivekananda is a real guru or not. The way he scolded him. The way he fired him. Unbelievable. Unbelievable language. But Alasinga was true to that fiery zeal of Vivekananda. He understood the master's mind. But he's feeling the pain, the agony of the Indian masses, of the Indian youth. That is why one man could receive the plunt of his fire. Nearly 40, 50 letters. next day I'll Either we queue back and say, Vere Guru said, fancy mana hankara mana mana But not at a single. Not JJ Goodwin. Not Miss MacLeod. Not Miss Waldo, who got the maximum scoldings from him. She used to come from 40 kilometers in New York at the time to write his uh, manuscript. She's a stenographer. But Swamiji is used to fire at her, scold her. She cried one day, what have I done that you are scolding me so much and loving others? Swamiji cried. <laughs> and said, sister, I am scolding you because I love you. I am removing that karma from your pain. Many, many years of life of karma and breaking, you are not able to know that. It is entering into your brain, I can see it. But you did not know. From that day she wanted more scoldings. <laughs> Miss Waldo. And this Miss Waldo, all her life, throughout that day, Inspired Talks, there is a book called Inspired Talks, she used to have her pen dipped always in the ink pot. That's why no fountain pen ink, it was all dip ink, dip pens. Always. She did not know when that inspired words will come from Vivekananda's heart. Midnight, daytime, 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock, she is ready. Always running behind him like a shadow. And she used to note down. Sometimes Vivekananda used to whisper. One or two words she used to catch. That's why in that book, there are many dots and dots. We don't know what Vivekananda spoke. She could not listen to that because he whispered. But when he spoke loudly, she used to read. Swamiji was inspired. He was in the great heights of spiritual inspiration. From which suddenly used to come. Suddenly used to come down. And then these, all these people are silent and very serious and waiting for that fiery words of Granam to come out of his master's words. 
Swami used to make fun. Let us go and eat ice cream. These people are stunned. Suddenly he is going to the heights of Dana, Upanishads, Brahman, realization, etc. He is coming, let us go and eat ice cream. Like a child. And in the next few minutes, ice cream in his hand, his mind is in Samadhi. And again when it comes down, he says, let us make some rasam and eat and drink rasam. And purposely he used to add more karam inside that. So that the Americans will weep. <laughs> and he used to stand like that and laugh. <laughs> Inspiration. What are we talking when we seeing a photo and quoting only one quotation here and one, you know everything about Vivekananda? <laughs> Sweeping master. He sweeps the dust out of your feet. And he served the disciples, inspired soul. Shisha is not able to walk in Himalayas. Vivekananda already had the experience and he had a high degree of boasted strength. So he saw Shishya struggling. Vivekananda was on the horse. He made the just lifted him, put him on the horse, and Vivekananda is pulling the horse. Shishya is stunned. And he was wearing slippers. Who the Shishya? It was not going into the horse the saddle, that into the shoe. So Vivekananda removed the shoe and carrying in the hand. That is the Guru's inspiration. Shishya says, Swami, we have to do. No. Future, you have to do much more. I have to serve you. See, he don't uh, take Vivekananda by the face value and just uh, say this one or that one. You have to be inspired to go inside. You have to Svikar inchala fire me. In Chetra Bet call a fire. A fire to college will be a fire. Me fire to call a fire to call a fire. Me friends. Me friends. Dora will go. Me they will be the Tamasha Jay. But they will be the Nikon. But they will be the Pramukshan. But they will be the Nikon. Some friends were telling some people were telling me. So what, what are you talking? What are you talking? You have to be filled with that fire. That is where he says in another place, only the powerful letter comes here. What you are supposed to do? What you are supposed to do? How should you feel? How should you think? Don't be mediocre life. Swamiji never liked mediocre life, mediocre thinking. Uninspired soul, he used to call uninspired. He says, the day your face is dull, mind is dull, don't come out of your house. Swamiji says, there's enough of sorrow in the world, don't add to it. <laughs> the day you are cheerful, please come. He said, the day you are cheerful, come and show and remove the miseries of the society. Don't add to the problem. So in the, uh, some, uh, in a place in America, Swamiji was meditating and he says a beautiful letter, he writes to the Hale sisters, who were also highly inspired by him and who were really like his sisters, four sisters were there. Swamiji used to fight with them, quarrel with them, make fun with them, inspire them and say, I'll make you free in this very life, no punar janma for you. Because you are so pure, you are so clean in your personality. There is no mala, there is no dirt. That is why he'll, he gave his best to them. So to the hell sisters, he writes his experience, what happened in that forest. This is an inspiring uh, uh, article, inspiring letter. It says, the other night, the camp people went to sleep beneath a pine tree under which I sit every morning in meditation and talk to them. Of course, I went with them and made a nice night under the stars, sleeping on the lap of Mother Earth and I enjoyed every bit of it. I cannot describe to you the night glories after a year of brutal life that I have led to sleep on the ground, to meditate under the tree, the inn people are more or less well to do and the camp people are healthy, young, sincere, holy men and women. I teach them Shivoham, Shivoham, and they all repeat it, innocent, pure as they are, and pray beyond all bounds. See the words. I want you to remember, listen to the word qualities of that disciples who were living with him, who were fortunate to be with him under in the forest. Next he writes, and I'm so happy and glorified. Thank God for making me poor. Thank God for making these children in the tents poor. <coughs> then he writes, 
iron bound nerves, the souls of triple steel, and the spirits of fire are in the camp. Language churandi. Language churandi. Me English ain't love. Bambi Bambi English. Pitto, patto, pitto. Ye English matter. Slang gorda thodre thele bhi nikho. Meka English thele sthe slang gorda sari ko upyogi chachi. See, iron bound nerves, souls of triple triple steel. And the spirits of fire are in the camp. He is referring to the people who are sleeping there. If you had seen them yesterday, this is his expression, like a painting he is writing. If you had seen them yesterday, where the rain was falling in torrents and the cyclone was overturning everything, hanging by their tent strings to keep them from, uh, hanging by their tent strings to keep them from being blown. And standing on the majesty of their souls, these brave ones, it would have done your hearts good. I will go a hundred miles to see the like of them. Imagine, there's a cyclone, there's a storm, there's rain blowing away the tents. These people with that iron nerves and triple steel and the fire, they're holding back the tent from being dragged away by the nature. He says that is not, I'm not seeing human beings. This is an explanation given by great Swamis. The Swamiji means here is, he is not seeing the human bodies or the Americans or the Europeans. He is seeing the Atmabala, the spirit, fighting against nature. He is seeing the Atman. He is not seeing a physical body, a man or a woman fighting there. He is seeing the Atman against nature. The nature is in fire. It's cyclone. Rainy. The tent is being swept away. But these fellows are, that is his way of looking at things inspired on this. And further he says, I will go a hundred miles to see them. Lord bless them. I hope you are enjoying your nice village. So imagine, now good dreams, good thoughts for you. You are good and noble. He is writing to the male sisters. You are good and noble, but what do you require? Instead of materializing the spirit, instead of materializing the spirit, as uh, Prasanna Sai was telling, economic tank. Today there is a big conflict in the youngsters, in my experience of visiting many, many of your engineering colleges. There is a conflict of decision. Conflict between your friends and you. What is that conflict? I am known by what I am versus I am known by what I have. Am I right? I am known by what I am versus I am known by what I have. It can be by your mobile, it can be by, by your uh, vehicle, by your dress, by what you have, not by what you are. But Swamiji wanted the opposite. By what you are, by what I am, bereft of all that. I am divine. Go into that world and check out the delusion of your people. What did Christ do when he went to a big uh, church in Rome? He saw all the commercial people, the shopkeepers and everything, selling and pleading and begging and doing all that mischief outside that chapel. Christ took a stick, it seems, and nicely went and gave meetings to them. And drove them out of that church comfort because they were commercializing that value system. That spiritual value was being commercialized. You could not tolerate. How do you get that grit? How do you get that authenticity? How do you get that sensitivity? Swamiji will help you. Swamiji will bless you. Because you have to maintain that purity. And again he says, you see, stick to God. Inspired living means stick to God. Don't seek God. See God. See God. Practice it with these very eyes. But back up is your pure mind. See God. Are you seeking your face in the mirror early morning? You are not seeking. You are not searching. You are seeing. It is as clear as that. Stick to God. Who cares what comes to the body or to anything else? Through the terrors of the evil, say, my God, my love. Through the pangs of death, say, my God, my love. 
through all the evils under the sun, say, my God, my love. Poetically, po po poetical prose. Vivekananda's English is poetical prose. Wonderful. Your English will be bombarded. It will be, ab ab it will be awarded. See, writing master, speaking master, organizing master, and we can give a lot of qualifications and colons to that. Never mind. Let us not praise too much. Because we'll miss the music. We'll praise the artist. We'll not appreciate the ragam, dalam, and the bhavam, and the bhavam, and the, uh, this one, the, raga, the melody behind it. Let us worship the music. Okay? Swami himself says, don't uh, praise me too much or don't idolize me too much. My principles are important. The only a uh, highest guru has ever said that. So he says here, I'll read out in continuity. I want your attention for next two or three minutes. Through the tenors of evil, say, my God, my love. Through the pangs of death, say, my God, my love. Through all the evils under the sun, say, my God, my love. Thou art here, I see thee. Thou art with me, I feel thee. I am thine, take me. I am not of the worlds, but thine. Leave not then me. Do not go for glass beads. Do not glow for glass beads. Leaving the mine of diamonds. In Telugu it has been beautifully translated. Chilli kapala kosaram abeats la thirukutu na ne hradayal la vajra vaidhoriyal unnai. Chilli kapala kosaram. Aindu rupayal, ar rupayal, yed rupayal, yed rupayal, yed rupayal. Rashu dhani. All the jewel shop are filled up in the entire road this side, up to Abid's. Mosquitoes also cannot go inside. <laughs> but then in your heart you are not seeing the mine of diamond and the gold. He says here, do not go for glass beads when there is a mine of diamonds. This life is a great chance. This life is a great chance. What? Seekest thou the pleasures of the world? He is the fountain of all bliss. He is the fountain of all bliss. Seek for the highest. Aim at the highest and you shall reach the highest. You are affectionately with blessings Vivekananda. He is telling you 2012, June 30 to the 160 boys of RYC. Not to just Hill sisters or XYZ. Because letters are always personal to you, to the listener, to the reader. See the last sentence, the blessing that he is giving to all of you. It's not an ordinary thing that you are eating here, sleeping here, and uh, learning here, and uh, spend breathing here. Where in the organization or the mat, he has given his blood, he has given his breath, he has given his spirit. Don't go back empty handed. Don't go back with just appreciation. Don't go back with just uh, the, the sympathy on your lips. Go back with fire in your heart. That should be your transformation. So look at the master. What? Seekest thou the pleasures of the world? He is the fountain of all bliss. Seek, the for, seek for the highest. Aim at the highest and you shall reach the highest. If Vekarda is telling you, you should reach it. You must reach it. You can reach it. Will you not? Yes. Now that fire. Think about it. Think about it. If you want to really follow the footsteps of Vivekananda, be like Babar Ali. How many of you know Babar Ali's story? How many of you have seen the video? Some have not seen. So reminder, re-darshan re for you. A new thing for all others. It will be a new, new thought process. What a master young boy. Huh? You are all B-Techs and fully uh, completed B-Techs and um, uh, this one, that one struggling in this nature. as the youngest headmaster in the world. Previous year, I was the dead fellow, and I speak in Bengali. Then it translated by English. And then I determined that next 
conference I speak in English. And nowadays I myself nowadays I myself is a student of English honors of a nearby of, of a nearby college. So I feel myself lucky. And after having shared a wonderful opportunity to share my views with a beautiful audience. I feel myself lucky and have to have been born in such an auspicious country where the humanity is of utmost priority. I feel myself lucky and have to have been rendered a marvelous scope to extending my heart to feel the powers of my countrymen. I thank God because he is kind enough to give me ample scope to serving the people of my motherland from the very grassroots level. When I was a just for a few seconds, I want each one of you to remember the words and the beautiful feeling that he has. 